What's up everyone, it's Endymion, and here I am again with another new video. Am I making this video and releasing it on Valentine's Day because my girlfriend would be angry with me if I was working today? Absolutely. I'm not even going to attempt to sugarcoat it, but that's okay, because there's some insanely out of touch stuff happening that I really want to go over today. Let me start by asking you some questions. Do you think there's enough LGBT content in video games, and do you enjoy it when older games get thrown into the gutter so the new developers can virtue signal? Well, there's some stuff to go over today, fellas, from a woke agenda report to Tomb Raider being racist apparently. To begin, according to GLAAD, which stands for Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation, video games are not nearly gay enough. You heard that right. There's been quite a few articles circulating like this one titled, GLAAD's first annual gaming report is here to tell us how gay games are. Players are gayer than ever, but their digital worlds aren't. You're probably thinking, what the hell is GLAAD doing talking about video games? Well, it turns out they decided to start an annual report that collects data to find out if all the companies across industries are pandering enough to their liking. And if they aren't, they're targeted and get a big fat finger wiggled in their face demanding that they do better for the next report. This is insane, especially considering when it comes to the West. If it's anything, then the entire industry across games, movies, and TV are all insanely super gay already. But let me be frank with you, there's nothing inherently wrong with gay characters. However, I think you and I can come to some mutual understanding that there's definitely been an uptick of LGBTQ plus agenda pushing when it comes to, well, everything, really. It started small and has only grown since, and in my opinion, the push for LGBT checkboxes has exploded in recent years. I remember when The Last of Us had its DLC and it confirmed Ellie was gay, and that became a huge story. Because back in the mid-2010s, it wasn't as pronounced, and it felt at least to some degree to be organic how it came to be. Flash forward to today, and things are so gay, you're blinded half the time by all the rainbow flags everywhere. There's a saying called less is more, but that meaning has lost all sense these days. It's cause of this artificial push that many Western franchises have been hemorrhaging money. Take for example, the MCU, which used to be a boy's brand until Disney suddenly decided to switch it into a girl's brand, and to this day, the MCU is limping like a wounded animal. You also have articles like this recently, where Rocksteady really wants players to know that King Shark is gay. Which is fine, I guess, but what does this have to do with the game's quality? Nothing, actually. Like, at all. Let's read some of these stats in this report, cause this shit is wild, dude. According to GLAAD, the game industry is out of step with contemporary media in terms of LGBTQ representation and it is failing its LGBTQ customers. I guess I should just read some of what this article says, and I quote, According to GLAAD, 17% of the total gaming audience identifies as LGBTQ, or about one in every five players. This figure falls in line with statistics for Generation Z. Still, just 2% of all games on the market contain LGBTQ content, a saturation level that falls miserably short of those in film, TV, and other forms of entertainment media. GLAAD found that 28.5% of films from the top 10 distributors in 2022 contained an LGBTQ character, and LGBTQ characters appeared as series regulars at a rate of 10.6% on primetime scripted broadcast shows in 22 and 2023. For the gaming stats, GLAAD ran the numbers. In November 2023, the Xbox Store had 146 games with LGBTQ content, while PlayStation offered a list of 90 titles with gay themes, and Nintendo Switch eShop had 50 games tagged LGBT. Steam had 2,302 English-language games under its LGBTQ tag. But that figure dropped to 1,506 when filtering out adult-only sexual content titles. Together, these games compose less than 2% of the Xbox, PlayStation, and Switch digital libraries, and they made up just 1.7% of Steam's offerings without the adult-only content. For context, it's estimated that about 1% of all games released in the 2010s included LGBTQ themes." End quote. My god, am I saying LGBTQ like crazy in this video, dude. I'm already tired of it. But anyway, I don't know where they're pulling these numbers, but it seems absurd to be considering every single AAA game or indie seems to be going out of their way to pander in different ways. 
Spider-Man 2 is an obvious example that has plenty of LGBT representation, and even panders further with biracial person of color side missions, I'm not even kidding by the way, that's real. Honestly, the majority of Miles Morales' missions and story in Spider-Man 2, they all just seem to exist solely for ESG reasons. If you've played that game, Miles doesn't even really have an active role that genuinely matters with its main plot until probably 70% into the main game. Until then, Miles mostly just helps students with their projects and gets them to admit they want to bang each other. I get it, friendly neighborhood Spider-Man stuff, but it seems weird that Miles is dealing with this kind of thing, while Peter is over here fighting for his life while a symbiote tries to kill him. But it's not the only game, of course. Stuff like Overwatch 2 just exists to pander, with every single character in that game each having different pronouns, genders, and identities. It's a game that no longer wants to be fun and offer new experiences. It now exists to simply fill Activision, Blizzard, Microsoft, whoever owns it now's ESG ratings. Then, of course, circling back to Spider-Man, you have the Black Cat main mission, which, surprise, surprise, you play as Miles again. And what's the point of that mission? Why, of course, it's to get Black Cat back to her girlfriend in Paris by using a Doctor Strange artifact. Then Black Cat disappears and she's never seen again. She is in the story, just so Insomniac can say Black Cat is bisexual. I wish I was kidding, but that's modern gaming for you. Okay, I hear you ask. Stop attacking Insomniac. What else is out there? Well, besides the whole King Shark likes men angle, but like he's a fish, so who cares, we also have Gotham Knights, which also made it abundantly clear that Nightwing, for example, is bisexual. What does that have to do with gameplay or story, you may ask? Absolutely nothing. They just really want you to know that Nightwing swings both ways. Maybe if they cared more about making a good game than pandering, Gotham Knights wouldn't have had a mid-60s on Metacritic, but the message matters the most, I guess. Tim Drake was also turned gay as well in the comics, and that too is confirmed in Gotham Knights. And again, it's just there so Warner Bros. can up that ESG. Because clearly, the devs cared more about that than their game, which is next-gen only, but somehow looks worse than Arkham Knight, which came out nine years ago. I would wager that the push for more LGBT content does nothing but antagonize that group more. Because instead of it feeling organic, it actually feels as if it's being pushed into people's faces without them wanting it. A good example of how to do this right is Baldur's Gate 3, because you don't need to see any of that content really unless you want to. How much of it you see is dependent on your choices, but of course, I can't expect every game to offer the insane amount of choice compared to something like BG3 always. I get it. But it often just feels like they push these things into their games more so to check lists instead of telling a good story or focusing on what matters when it comes to games. Like, oh, I don't know, the gameplay? Or how well the thing runs without crashing? Then, of course, you have the associate director of GLAAD who really wants you to know how important this is, so let's hear him out and I quote, Despite the significant progress we've seen, gaming remains woefully behind other forms of entertainment media when it comes to representation. Some reasons for exclusion are passive. Often, game companies have not considered that they should represent LGBTQ people nor do they see us as a major part of the core gaming audience. Some reasons for exclusion are active. Companies worry about pushing away a core audience that they assume are resistant or hostile to LGBTQ content. This imagined core audience, however, is a myth, and it is one of the reasons it was paramount for GLAAD to create this gaming report. LGBTQ gamers are a significant part of the existing active gamer market and, by and large, Non-LGBTQ gamers are not nearly as resistant to this content as many assume." End quote. There's one part of this that really made my eyes open and my eyebrows raise, which is where Blair says this, "...companies worry about pushing away a core audience that they assume are resistant or hostile to LGBTQ content. This imagined core audience, however, is a myth and it is one of the reasons it was paramount for GLAAD to create this gaming report." So what Blair is saying here is that the core audience, meaning you and myself and the millions of people out there, our needs and wants should not be a concern when it comes to the creation and pushing of this sort of content. In fact, Blair believes that our unwillingness to see content like this is actually not real and we just welcome it. 
Very interesting. Blair apparently knows what we all want and that need is according to them to make everything even gayer than it already is. But the truth is that people aren't necessarily against LGBT content as much as they are just tired of it. Just speaking for me, I don't mind if a character is gay or whatever as long as it's organic and not made a point to be pushed constantly. Because I personally believe based on any gay person I know that their identity and existence is not simply defined by what they like in the bedroom. Gay people, like any other kind of person, are complex and their sexuality is but a facet of their overall person. The problem here, however, is that people like Blair and the companies they push to put as much of this sort of messaging and content as possible, they don't believe it that way. They believe, if you're gay, trans, or whatever, that this is the single most important and defining factor of your entire being. And everything else you are, whether it's your hobbies, fears, or aspirations, they must all be intrinsically tied to the core fundamental belief that you are, above all things, part of the LGBTQ plus community. My god, that's a mouthful. You're no longer an individual with your own thoughts, but instead you only exist to these people like Glad if you're viewed as a statistic that they can put into a spreadsheet to further their own motives. And that's really the core reasoning as to why so many people are so hellbent on pushing the agenda away from them. It's not that they're anti-gay, while I'm sure there are those out there who are like that, but the majority of us, myself included, are just tired of constantly seeing it everywhere. It's sort of like when trends become tiring and you keep seeing the same stuff over and over. It's why I say the half-shaven girl haircut has become the new bald-headed space marine of the 2020s. When you see it once or twice, it's cool, but when it's pushed this much, it just gets annoying. The same can be said about anything, like even memes are like this. Remember when taking an arrow to the knee was funny and then it got overdone so much that now even me reminding you that that meme exists likely caused you to roll your eyes or facepalm? It's like that. People aren't just against gay people, but come on, you have to realize that it's very obviously a real concern that these ideas are absolutely being pushed like crazy when it comes to today's media in every single form. If this weren't true, then we wouldn't need an entire organization that employs people to collect data like this and ensure their agenda wasn't being pushed to satisfy their needs. The actual existence of an annual Glad We Need More Gay Content report proves this. Glad further states, games are a medium in which players can be anything, but the game industry has continued to rely on very narrow representational options. Well, that's just not true either, is it? Considering how many games these days have abolished the entire concept of male or female when it comes to making characters. Take Baldur's Gate 3 or Starfield or any other recent create-your-own-character game. Even Pal World does this, and apparently they only made their body types one or two instead of male or female, because according to the director of Pal World, they know Western players apparently love to make ugly characters. The East laughs at us, but it's true. No matter how much we end up pandering, bending over, and giving until we have nothing left, it simply will never be enough for these groups. The entire games industry could be LGBT, and they'd still find a reason to cross their arms and throw a fit. This is why you never cater to or feed people who are constantly looking for your downfall, because all it takes is one excuse or slip and they'll have the ammo to run you down. And like I've said many times when it comes to these kinds of things, they don't feel like communities, but they feel more like echo chambers or cults. And you and I both have seen plenty of examples of people who step out of line with what these groups think and they're eviscerated by the same people they once called friends. That's sad, dude. And it's proving, time and again, that you cannot realistically cater to every single person's wants or needs. You can go ahead and make an LGBT-only game, but if you do that, then don't be mad when someone who's tired of that doesn't buy your game or product. It's like those cafe shops that had men taxes where male customers were forced to pay more than women. And to no one's surprise, those kinds of establishments all ended up closing their doors within a year because nobody wants to pay more than the other gender, simply because they're men? Big surprise that when you pander and try to put people into a box like this, they reject you. Like, dude, look at these demands that Glad wants from every modern gaming publisher and developer. Like, here, let's read it. The percentage of games with LGBTQ representation should be proportional to the share of gamers who are also LGBTQ. Game developers should strive for representation that promotes inclusivity and acceptance. 
the game industry should take responsibility for making their communities more inclusive. The game industry should consult LGBTQ media experts. LGBTQ game industry workers should be hired in positions of authority. So GLAD ultimately wants there to be as many games out there equal to the amount of LGBT people who play games. Wait, what? How does that even work exactly? So if there's a million gay players, they want one game to exist for every single player that is gay? This sounds more like the demands of a snobby child than that of an organization with people who are paid money to do things. As for demanding the industry to make their communities more inclusive, they already do. How many times have we seen posts where studios say, oh, today is Latin Employee Day, it's Black History Month, today is Lesbian Awareness Day, and so on. These groups want preferential treatment simply because they exist, that's what this means. Especially when they said LGBTQ workers should be hired in positions of authority. So they should be given a raise or promoted simply because they're not straight. That's what they're saying here, isn't it? Like, there's no wiggle room for that. They say, unless I'm crazy, but we're really demanding that people be promoted simply because they like some sausage in their buns or some flicking of the beans more than others. What the hell does your sexuality have to do with your ability to run a game studio or ensure the quality of a game is great? It's the old tired response that many give, but it rings true still, which is why are we hiring people based on identity and sexuality instead of actual work ethic and experience? No wonder so many of these AAA games are failing that push this sort of stuff like Suicide Squad and more. Because you're giving these grown children authority when they haven't earned it, and what's the end goal here exactly? Promote an LGBT person into authority so they can do what? Ensure the studio or company they work for? only hires more people who think exactly as they do? Isn't that how you just end up with echo chambers that police thought and silence others? None of this sounds good, and of course Glad says also in that report that companies need to hire LGBT content experts when making their games. This point, specifically, is Glad basically saying companies need to hire or make more Sweet Baby Inks. That's exactly what is being said here. Hire and pay these consulting firms to ensure your games are more inclusive and pander. That's all that means. And I don't need to tell you why when you do this, it just leads to worse products that people don't want to support. And again, it's not because your customers are hateful, but because you're so hell-bent on throwing this stuff in people's faces that they become desensitized and annoyed by it. And it has the opposite effect, making them instead seek out anything that is the opposite of what you're pushing. It's sort of like when parents tell their teenagers, hey, don't go out there and have sex. Like, okay, thanks mom, now that you told me not to do that, I am going to now go out of my way to do exactly that. Have we learned nothing? Hello, am I screaming into the void here? This problem even proved Glad's effects are having the desired outcome too, since recently Crystal Dynamics decided to say that they don't support the beliefs or content of previous Tomb Raider games. For those of you unaware, the Tomb Raider Remastered Collection is out as of the making of this video, or I think it is anyway. Whatever, it's out soon is the point. Anyway, Crystal Dynamics decided, oh by the way, we want our players to know we're one of the good ones, so we don't agree with these games. Like, listen to what they have to say. The games in this collection contain offensive depictions of people and cultures rooted in racial and ethnic prejudices. These stereotypes are deeply harmful, inexcusable, and do not align with our values at Crystal Dynamics. Rather than removing this content, we have chosen to present it here in its original form, unaltered, in the hopes that we may acknowledge its harmful impact and learn from it. Oh boy, just wait till Melanie Mag hears about this one, fellas. But as for me, this stupid, pointless virtue signaling post just sounds more like Crystal Dynamics as a developer shaming their player base while shitting on the legacy of a franchise that has kept their developers employed for years. Saying the older Tomb Raider games are racist while directly profiting off the sales of those very same games is moronic to me and pointless. If they really cared about this, they would publicly state that all the money they make from these Tomb Raider remastered games would go to indigenous groups in order to help them. But you and I both know they won't do this and will instead bend the knee claiming it's racist while also filling their pockets. What a pointless and disgusting thing to do and if you ask me, I won't be buying these remastered games either because Crystal Dynamics is clearly ran by woke morons who can't read the room. Even friend of the channel, The Critical Drinker, had this to say on it. Man, Crystal Dynamics really killing the hype for these remasters. You know how many people were traumatized and offended by the original Tomb Raider trilogy? Effing nobody. Because people were complete P-words back then. I can't say these things because of YouTube. I'm sorry. 
And he's right, it's stupid and very moronic. I always hated this backwards pandering tactic where the people of today go, oh, we understand this was racist, so we're trying to do better, but also please buy it so we can stay employed mentality. Like, no matter what you do at the end of the day, Lara Croft is raiding tombs. The game is called Tomb Raider for God's sakes. What the hell is she supposed to do? I already know, whenever the next Tomb Raider game happens, she'll have a diverse sidekick that is tied to the culture she's raiding a tomb of. And at the end, she'll give whatever treasure she finds back to those people, and I also guarantee the bad guy will likely be an evil man. Probably white and straight too, and Lara will save the day and leave a white savior while the indigenous people dance going, ah, she's one of the good ones. And then Crystal Dynamics employees can pat themselves on the back, saying to themselves in the comfort of their own homes, man, I really am one of the good ones, aren't I? I am just so open to diversity and inclusivity, and it has nothing to do with the fact that if I say or do anything that goes against that in any way, I could lose my job and be excommunicated forever. I don't know if you can tell, but between the whole Glad thing demanding their nonsense and this Tomb Raider crap, all of this is just pointless pandering nonsense. We can't just have good games made for fun anymore. Everything has to be a political statement, everything must check boxes, and everything must above all else be done so places like Glad don't put you in their next report. Cause then all the other studios and developers will read that report and go, my god, that person I thought was an ally with their pins on their denim jacket are actually not the ally I thought they were. And then therapists get called cause nobody can handle any amount of stress or pressure anymore. Lawsuits get filled and people get fired cause they don't agree with the current thing. You ask me? All of this is nonsense. This GLAD report proves that we're so down the gutter when it comes to what actually matters that I genuinely don't know if this industry will recover from these ideologies. The Western game industry is already a cesspool of virtueness, but now it's clear that these people at work are attempting to ensure the boot stays on the industry's neck. And if they don't comply, their ESG scores will worsen and their livelihoods could be at stake. That doesn't sound like a bright future to me, fellas. It sounds more like there's dozens of companies and studios out there that are all hiding behind whatever they can to ensure they aren't targeted. You ask me? It seems like an industry that is fueled and ruled by fear more than anything else. But I will work to keep them accountable because we already know these journalism websites sure as hell won't. But let me know what you think as always, and thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, and share this video if you enjoyed it. Thanks to my patrons, and I hope you have a great day. Happy Valentine's Day, whether it's between you and a loved one or you and your hand. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for being here, and I'll see you in the next one.